Leon Panetta, of course, former CIA director, former secretary of defense. Thank you very much, Leon. It's good to see you. So just a few weeks ago, it seemed like Ukraine could pull off this incredible upset victory over Russia. That narrative, not realistic at the time, but because of their strong, stronger than expected military gains, that's shifted now. Russia is making some gains in the east. Ukraine seems to be fighting for its very survival. Is this a tipping point 100 days since the invasion? Leon, I think, is muted. We're going to just fix that, I Leon. I apologize. It's, you're much no, better when we I, can hear you, Leon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good to see I'm you. Glad I, can I'm just, I'm glad I, can I assume you heard the question. Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, look, uh, we're at 100 days of uh, war in the Ukraine, and we've been through three phases, really. The first was the failed invasion. Uh, where Russia thought it could capture the capital within a few days, and uh, that obviously failed. Uh, we went into a phase of total destruction and brutal killing uh, that I think Russia was uh, aiming at trying to break the will of the Ukrainian people, and that didn't work. Uh, and now we're in this third phase, which is essentially a prolonged war of attrition in which Russia is trying to make gains in the Donbass area, uh, and uh, Ukraine is trying to hold territory there as well. I, bottom line is we are in a prolonged war of attrition. Uh, and I think Putin is basically playing for time because he thinks that as, as he prolongs that war, that ultimately the West will blink. I think that's his strategy. And it is very important, therefore, for Ukraine, the United States, and our allies to remain unified and remain tough and continue the effort to try to push back on the Russians. Uh, the message from Ukraine is that they will not accept concessions of territory. In order to reach a peace agreement with Russia, Russia has shown no sign of being honorable negotiators. But former Secretary of State Kissinger came out advocating for Ukraine to begin talking about something that would permit uh, Russia to get maybe the Donbas and hold on to what they've got now, and Ukraine to at least be able to stop their being pulverized by the Russian artillery barrage. Where do you come down? This is, uh, I think, as President Biden has said, uh, this is a decision that uh, President Zelensky and Ukraine have to make as to uh, what they are willing to negotiate on with the Russians. Uh, they're the ones that have put their lives on the line. They're the ones that are fighting every day courageously and bravely to try to protect their country. Uh, I, I think it really is up to them to make the decision uh, whether or not they're going to uh, negotiate based on where these territorial gains are now. I, look, territory is leverage right now in terms of negotiations. That's why Putin is trying to gain as much territory as possible, because he thinks it increases his leverage if ultimately negotiations are held. Ukraine has to make sure that they hold on to territory as well. It's leverage for them. And so I think we're going to see a prolonged war here of attrition until one side or the other makes a dramatic move that either forces negotiations or forces a greater escalation of the war. That's, that's the place we are at right now with regards to the war in Ukraine. Will the addition of these HIMARS, these longer-range artillery, uh, assuming that the training can be done in time, before that window shuts down on the Ukrainians. Will that help make a difference? Or could it risk escalating the war and putting the U.S. into direct confrontation with Russia? You know, we're, <laughs> we, we're involved in a war. There are risks involved in war. Uh, but it is critical for the United States and our allies to provide uh, these weapons to the Ukrainians. Uh, they, have, they are the ones who have to defend their country. Uh, and right now, it's pretty clear that Russia's basic tactic here is to turn these Ukrainian cities into rubble. Uh, and that forces uh, civilians out, and eventually they take what is left of these cities. That's kind of their strategy, which is to just blow the hell out of Ukraine. Uh, I think Ukrainians need to have the kind of weaponry 
that can deal with Russian artillery and missile shots that are destroying cities. Uh, they absolutely need the capability of being able to bring those missiles down and to be able to go after those artillery sites. And that is exactly the kind of weapons that are now being provided. It's taking time. We've got to train the Ukrainians. But I think ultimately the addition of those weapons can really help the Ukrainians stand up to the Russians. I want to ask you about Saudi Arabia, because we are reporting that there is a plan for the president to go and try to repair relations with MBS, uh, on the breach, of course, over the, uh, the brutal murder of Khashoggi under his order. But uh, this plan, obviously, it involves going against Iran. There are a lot of relations that are important there, but also oil, and ignoring the human rights abuses that led candidate Joe Biden to call him a pariah in one of the one of the of our debates back in 2019. Is this a concession that the president should be making? Let me show you what he had to say today. Look, I'm not going to change my view on human rights, but as president of the United States, my job is to bring peace if I can, peace if I can, and that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, what do you make of? <laughs> the decision to go if he ends up going, as we are reporting. This is, uh, this is the friction that presidents have to often face between uh, real politic and the problems that they're confronting as president uh, and moral outrage. Uh, the moral outrage of having seen uh, Saudi Arabia kill uh, Khashoggi, an American citizen, uh, and uh, it was clear that President Biden made clear when he came into office that he was going to make him pay a price uh, and be considered a pariah. But the president is facing some big challenges right now, particularly with regards to inflation, uh, with regards to uh, the production of energy. Uh, Saudi Arabia controls uh, a lot of that. Uh, in addition to that, Saudi Arabia can be critical uh, to uh, dealings with Israel. If they could join the Abraham Accords, uh, they have yet to do that. But if they could, uh, that would be a significant change there. Uh, and lastly, of course, uh, dealing with Iran, uh, the ability to pull these moderate Arab states together is critically important to that effort as well. So I think the president is making a decision based on the needs of the United States at the moment. I hope that he doesn't forget the human rights aspect and that if he does meet uh, with the, uh, uh, the prince, that he will make clear that human rights are still important to the United States and to the world. Leon Panetta, thank you very much. Thanks today for, for this again, as always.